And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Paris. Now, Paris is a game I was interested in because of the lineage. It's designed by Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling, the design team behind Takal. And of course, Michael Kiesling uh, and both of these designers, even on their own, have put out tremendous games. Have you heard of a game called Azul? These guys do a great job together. And so even while the name of the game, Paris, beautiful city, but you know, I don't know what anything about this game is, but I was intrigued by it. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. Let's find out. You're going to build this map here with these six neighborhoods and these bonus tiles put around. And this is a set way that everything's built, but you can mix up the way the bonus tiles are by shuffling the same letters B and putting them in different spots and the neighborhoods can be mixed up. Not a big deal, just gives you a different way for a random setup. Each player is going to start with a number of keys based on the number of players. Extra keys will be set aside, you can possibly get those. And on a player's turn, they're going to be choosing a building from the top of one of these three piles. There are six buildings per neighborhood. Three of these buildings will be removed from the game randomly that you don't know about. You can see on a pile what neighborhood a building goes in, but you don't know which one it is. So let's say I take this one, it's the number eight, so I put it on the eighth slot. And then I take my turn. Uh, each person, once these are out, that part isn't in the game anymore. But your turn is essentially going to be you putting a key on the board or moving a key on the board. When you put a key on the board, you can put it in the middle or you can put it in a specific neighborhood. If you put it in the neighborhood, you're going to get francs equal to where you put it. So this one's four, five, six, seven, two, three. So that neighborhood's maybe the worst one for money, and this one's the best one, but maybe you want to go to that neighborhood. So as the game goes by, more tiles are going to be placed in these areas, and it's going to be growing the different spots on the board. So instead of placing a key on the board, you may, where does this one go? This one goes here. You may decide, once you have a key on the board, to move to a building in that neighborhood. If your key is in the middle of the board, you can move to any neighborhood, which gives you great flexibility, but when you put your key there, you get no money. When you put, take your key the neighborhood, you can move it to a building, and that this building here, for example, is a two, so therefore I would have to pay two francs. Uh, now later on, let's say in the same neighborhood there's a five building, if I put another red key there, I could pay five to go to that building, or I can move my key from the two building to the five building, and then I would pay the difference, which would be three. Now you want to move up in these buildings because being in hiding, higher buildings is better. Also, if you go to a building and there's a resource next to it, a bronze, silver, or gold star, wood, stone, or gold, the first person to go to each building is going to get that resource. And those resources can be turned in for money if you're desperate, shown on your player board. Um, you can also buy the other resources if you need them. And that's because if you go to a number eight building, not only do you need to pay eight or the difference, but you also need to pay a wood to go there. But you're going to immediately get two victory points. You can't really go beyond eight, or can you? That's because we have these prestige buildings that are next to the board, and you can build one of these. Now, these are going to be more expensive. A 10 is going to cost you 10 francs, although, again, you can pay the difference when going there. And this one also costs a gold. But once you build this building, you're going to be able to go there. You can also turn in, in this case, I can turn in up to two bronze stars and a silver star and get this many victory points. It's a way to get a lot of victory points. But when you build that building in the area you're going to, you put the building here and go on this. Maybe later on someone might even build a different building and go there. This is going to matter because as soon as there are a total of four keys in any neighborhood, the person who puts the fourth key is going to pick a victory point tile from a pile next to the board and put it here. At the end of the game, whoever is in the highest number is going to get the highest number of points, second highest number, second highest points, etc. So you want to, it's a bit of an area control game to do that. Now, that's kind of the main focus of this game. There's two other things that are involved with the game. First of all, once all the building tiles are out, instead of placing a key or moving a key, you can take one of these flags. You can look at all the flags and pick one. These give you some minor bonuses, victory points, money, resource, etc. But the bigger thing is when all the flags are gone, that triggers the end of the game. 
Secondly, when you take a one or a two tile, you, when you move to one of those, you get to move on the bonus tile track. If you go to a three tile, you can also move on a bonus tile track, but you pay money to do so. So you'll notice there's a big bonus tile track on around the outside of the board. What you're allowed to do is when you get to move on it, you can move as far as you can want. You can go all the way to tile 30, but you can never go backwards. So I might go here for my first move and take four coins. Then maybe in my next turn I go here and take a victory point and three coins. And then go here and take here I get a tile that I can turn in whenever I want. That will give me three points for every building I'm in that's worth two. So I gotta say that for the right moment. Or here I can place a, a key for minus two. There's all kinds of things. That, I'm sorry, I can pay two to get another key. There's all kinds of tiles and they all do different things. Many of them give points, many of them give immediate bonuses, but remembering that you can jump as far ahead as you want and take that tile because you might want to be the first one to get it, but you can never go back. That's it. Once the game end is triggered, you will look at the victory point tokens for each of the areas. You'll score to see who have the most. You'll add that to the points you got over the course of the game, and whoever has the most points is the winner. I really like the artwork on these cards. The whole board is a, has a very pretty feel to it. Now, the game itself comes with some tokens that you can use, but I guess I got an upgraded version because these are wooden with things on. I like these a little bit better. I like the wooden keys. There is actually a 3D Arc de Triumph that you can put in the middle, but we found that got in the way, so we just used the flattened one that the game comes with. And the shields are not really necessary. Like, I guess you want to keep your money and keys hidden from everybody else, but they do look cool. Look, it's a 3D house. I'm pretty happy with the production of this. It's a little bit to set up, and in fact, the variable setup is faster than the actual normal setup because I don't need to match each number. I just need to put a B on top of a B. So I would play with the variable setup, but I'm pretty happy with how this one looks. It actually looks pretty nice. Huzzah! It's good! I knew it, and I'll tell you why. Because nowadays, with a lot of modern Euro game designers, the goal is to be as complex with rules as you can. The rules for this game are only four pages. That's because Kramer and Kiesling, for some reason, can take a fairly in-depth game and give it a few rules, and that's how this is. Now, this is a mix of area control and money. This is a weird game. When you first play it, you'll probably have this happen to you. You'll be like, ooh, I put a key down, I get some money. I move a key, I spend some money. I put a key down, I get some money. And this is how the economy works. And, oh, I'm out of keys. <gasps> I don't have any more money. I can't move anymore. That will happen to you. Because at first I thought, well, who, how are we going to force people to end the game? Eventually you have to because you're out of money. And if you can't move a key, then you're forced to take one of those flag things. So that's kind of interesting. And when you go into your second game, you suddenly know this. So I love that part of it. You're fighting for area control of the different spots. Everybody wants to go to the spot that gives you seven money, but everyone's going there. So maybe if I go to another spot that gives me less money, I can jump up faster and then control more places. It's a neat concept and works well. And then there's the bonus tiles. Man, do I love these bonus tiles. They are fantastic. I love, one of my favorite mechanisms in a game is you can move as far ahead as you want, but you can never go back. And those bonus tiles near the end are juicy. But you can move super slow, but if you do, someone will jump ahead and take the stuff you want. The first time we played, people were like, I'll take the first one, I'll take the second one, I'll take the third one. And finally someone says, I want that 10th one, you know, and then they just go to 11, 12, 13, and so the people behind them are like, oh no, we're not getting the good ones, and then they jump ahead. That's just a fun concept. You also have to realize you're not going to be moving on that many bonus tiles over the game, so it's okay to jump ahead. This concept to me works great. The whole thing is, it's, it, Paris has the feel of a lighter game with deeper overtones to it. As in, the rules are not that complex. There's not that much going on. But when it's done, I feel like I played a good, meaty, solid Euro. The trappings of helping build Paris are nice in the background. The components and stuff, it's an easy game to teach. But I'm not sure it's easy to be the best at. And it's definitely a game where there's some luck as the buildings come out. The game definitely has two halves. Their first half, the buildings are coming out. And three of the buildings aren't even going to show up. Then the second half's a race to figure out who gets to what first, get to those bonus tiles first, to be the first to build the Eiffel Tower or Notre Dame, which costs a bunch of resources, so you have to get those. There's, there's enough going on where the turns are fast and simple, 
and I'm always thinking, what am I going to do best? There's that interaction because we're fighting for control and fighting to be the first to get bonus tiles and satisfying you're constantly doing fun things. This is a really good solid game. These guys are just gold when it comes together. So I certainly will recommend Paris. I'm Tom Vassell and you've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment approved. <laughs>